Thank you for listening to our lessons from our daily Bible reading. The lesson today is, Who Made You Boss? From Numbers 15 through 16 and Psalm 90. Are you kidding me? You know, that's the thought that I have oft times as I read in the Old Testament about what individuals did. You know, in our reading the last couple of days, God had brought the children of Israel, just as he promised, up to the land flowing with milk and honey. He told them, go spy out the land. I'll give it to you. They went in. They saw the cities were walled. The people were great. We are grasshoppers. So they wouldn't go in. Well, God told them then through Moses, his spokesman, you're going to wander 40 years. 40 days you went in and spied out the land, so 40 years you're going to wander total. Well, you think, of course, they learned their lesson. They said, well, we'll do what you said. They went in and God told them through Moses, don't you go, I'm not with you. And they got defeated. But now, in our reading yesterday, Moses uh, has again been challenged. He's telling them about sacrifices, or he's being told about sacrifices that would be done when they did get into the land. But then in chapter 16, it says, Korah, the son of Ithar, the son of Koath, the son of Levi, the Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the sons of Pilath, the sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. They gathered themselves together against Moses and Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. The Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. They're looking and they're saying, Who made you boss? And you think, Come on now. You remember what just happened? Moses has clearly been selected by God as a leader. And yet, when you rebel, you find all of these things that happen to you, and now here you are again. And so they looked, and they, like many people today, you're not the boss of me. I have as every much right to do what I want. How many times have we seen that? Well, you see it throughout the Old Testament. Sadly, you see it in the New Testament. You see it in our day. Think of how much greater things would be if we were simply a people who looked and understood the chain of authority. God, of course, is the one who created all. He's the one who said it, that settles it. You look and you find, you get over to the New Testament, and how many problems, of course, if we simply followed what God said under that covenant that we're now under, that new covenant, if we simply did what it said. You know, you think about the church. How many congregations do you know? How many denominations are out there? Because people look and they look to Jesus and say, who made you boss? He said, well, they don't say that. Well, yeah, they do. Jesus said, Luke 6 and verse 46, if you, why, or rather, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? In John 14, 15, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You know, Jesus said it. And yet people deny that it's his church, Matthew 16, verse 16 through 18, that he is the head of it, Ephesians 1, 21 and 20, uh, 20 and 21. They deny that they have to do all things according to his will, Colossians 3 and verse 17. As a result, you have churches teaching anything and everything you want. And sadly, even those within the Lord's church. Elders, they forget who's in charge, and they begin to make laws. Uh, elders are an authority, and the church would do well to remember that. Hebrews 13 and verse 17, you're to obey them. But elders don't have the right to decide that, well, it doesn't work anymore. The women's role, the manner of worship, whether we have instrumental music or not, God settled those things whenever he said it. And yet problems arise when that comes about. And then you find in the homes, within the home itself, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, children obey your parents. How many kids look and they think they have the right? You know, I'm old enough to make my decisions. Well, you can. Might go back and read in the book of Numbers and see how that works. 
But the fact is, God set that authority. Parents are over the children. And within the headship of the home, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the husband is the head. Christ is the head of all again. He doesn't have the right to do things that are ungodly. Doesn't have the right to expect people to do ungodly things, including his wife. But he is to take the headship, and the woman is to submit unto him. People look, so who made you boss? Then in society, Romans the 13th chapter, you see the powers that be are ordained of God, remember? Kind of like Moses. God spoke through him. God put an order in this world. And yet people today, they rebel against the powers that be. Well, now, if there are things that are not in accord with the will of God, as in the book of Acts, we must obey God rather than man. But the rebellion, you see, isn't that. You know, God never made laws whether I should wear a mask, whether I should drive this speed on the road. I mean, that's up to the powers that be that make decisions such as that. I may not like it, but if I have a proper respect, I obey the powers that be. I mean, on and on you go. In the Old Testament, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, it was amazing how they just looked, and you got to say, are you kidding? As they looked to Moses, and in essence looked to God and said, who made you boss? Well, today, there are bosses in this world, but it all goes back to the order that God gave. And whenever we rebel against those, we do well to remember God punished those evildoers. And we today, whether it be in the church, whether it be in the home, whether it be in society, we rebel against the powers that God has set forth. We're no better than Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. I hope that we have a good day. And our day will be better if everybody would simply learn to live life with the system of authority that God has set forth. Thank you for listening. Thank you again for joining us in this Bible study. We remind you, if you'd like to follow along in our daily Bible reading, the link below in the description of this video will give you the PDF so you can read right along with us. If you have any other questions or if you'd like information on a Bible study, contact us with the information provided on the screen before you.